All right, welcome to chapter four, where we're going to talk about the number system, the real numbers. Um, imagine this drawing I have here. It's like a coin sorter, where you dump your change in, and the quarters go in one slot, and the nickels go in one slot, and so on. Well, the same thing basically happens with numbers. As you drop numbers in this real number system sorter, if you will, it's going to land in up to one or several different spots. So I want to talk about each one of these things. And uh, I think the first and maybe most important thing to making sense of all this is any number that's not imaginary, that is, that uh, is classified is either rational or irrational. It's always one or the other. So let's look at this box over here that has no friends at all. So if it's an irrational number, it's going to look like pi, it's going to look like the square root of 2, or the square root of 3, or the square root of 5, stuff like that. It wouldn't be the square root of 4, though, because the square root of 4 is 2, and that's something different. So we're talking numbers that look like this. Um, these things generate decimals that do not repeat or end and you can see that pi is the classic example of that and so is the square root of 2 and 3 and 5 and 7 and so on uh, these things make decimals that do not ever end nor do they ever repeat themselves and rational numbers are just the opposite these things these things uh, either these rational numbers generate I don't know if I have enough space here generate decimals that repeat or end and uh, y rational numbers could look like anything it could be stuff let's just list a few here in yellow or uh, yeah that color so if I had three fourths well that would be equal to 0.75 and you can see that three-fourths generates a decimal that ends, whereas one-third would generate 0.333, you know, repeating. So these would all repeat. So we could say that 0.75 is rational. We could say that three-fourths or one-third is rational. We could say a number like two is rational because two is just two. That is a decimal, 2.0. Um, pretty much any fraction or any decimal you could also have negative numbers like negative seven would be a rational number uh, negative three fifths would be a rational number any any number over another number will make a rational number so don't think that just because you take 22 and divide it by a weird number like five that decimal is going to eventually repeat or end okay so any fraction or any decimal are rational including negative so and decimal so if you had like say negative 0 0.701 that would be a rational number okay now let's look at some integers integers are very specialized this is like the number line okay like your you know your fingers too you could have negative 2 negative 1 0 1 2 dot 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 and I could put the dots in either direction. Those are called points of ellipsis, by the way, those little dots. thought I'd throw that out there. But you can't have fractions here. So we need to put a little note here. No fractions or decimals. No fractions or decimals in the integers. No fractions and no decimals. All right, looking at the whole numbers, the whole numbers actually have a starting point. It starts with zero. So zero and whole is how I always remember that. Zero, zero, whole numbers are the ones that have zero in it. Uh, two, three. So these are the positive counting numbers, including zero. The, these have no negatives. Okay, no negatives in the whole numbers. And the natural numbers, you're thinking of those like your fingers, you know, like one finger two three and dot 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 no negatives no zero no fractions no decimals just the pure counting kindergarten digits if you will okay
So if we had a number like 2, 2 would be classified as a natural number, a whole number, an integer, and a rational number, but not an irrational number. Because remember, it's either rational or irrational. So let's, let's just try a couple here. Let's just try a couple examples. So let's number 1, 2, and 3. And let's take something like 1 half and the square root of 4 and something like pi plus 3. Okay, so we're going to classify these now. So I'll make some blanks. Hopefully these come out straight. Kind of fighting the clock here. All right, so if we have one half, now I'm going to pause this. I want you to use your chart and try to figure this out. I'll be right back. Okay, so if you have one half, the first thing I do if I had a test full of these is I would write the word real. I would write the word real on all the blanks because they're all real numbers. The next thing I would do is figure out if these are rational or irrational. Okay, one half is clearly rational. It does not look like the square root of two or pi. Okay, the square root of four actually simplifies to positive two. Okay, and that's, a ba that's like a natural number. So this is definitely rational. Remember, it's the ones, it's the square roots that don't come out even, not the perfect squares. It's like the square root of 5 and the square root of 13 and so on. Square root of 8 even. Pi plus 3, remember, pi is 3.14159, blah, 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 blah. If you just add 3 to it, well, you make it 6.14159, blah, blah, blah. So this does not end or repeat. This is irrational. Okay. Now we're going to drill down a little bit into these other into these other things. Let me put this chart back up here and fade that one out for a second. Um, <clears throat> we were looking at one half. Now one half hits here. It hits in the rational numbers. It's not an integer. So it's only rational and real. Um, the other one was the square root of four, which made a natural number. So that hit the bullseye right there. So that's a natural, a whole, an integer, and a rational number. Okay, so let's go back and figure this out. So this one is done. Okay, that one is done. This one would be a natural, what else? Whole and an integer. And because we were smart about this and listed the big ones first, we don't have to worry about that because a lot of times people will forget the rational when you do this. And remember, if something is irrational, it has no other sets it belongs to. It's just irrational, but it is still a real number. And that's it. All right, so we'll practice that later. Have a good one.